Watch some sounds. Watch some music today. The Lord, it's like he, he brought us up to look over the horizon and let us see something in the far future, in, the, in our destiny. We looked over that and saw it all. Hallelujah. Or saw some of it anyway. Man, just a little bit of, of destiny. <laughs> it's, you know, it's like the old saying, a little bit will do you, man. And, uh, well, it, I want to see more of it, don't you? I mean, there were sounds happening today that, that um, the Lord had me play my eagle guitar today, the, the, the eyes of the seer. Now, I want you to, uh, well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your anointing, Lord. Your word is the answer to everything. There is nothing beyond your word, Lord. Your word is you in written form. And we give you praise, and it's dear to us, Lord. And it's dear to the life of every believer. It's dear to the life of those who love you with all their heart. So, Lord God, I thank you for your precious word. Hallelujah, Lord. Every saint that was ever laid to rest and put in and passed on from this life to the other that ever had your word laid upon their chest. Lord, they loved your word. And Lord, honor that, Lord, that it was placed within their, even their bones, that their bones will respond to the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give you praise and honor and glory. Amen. You know, the word of God is so quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword that it pierces even to the dividing asunder of spirit, soul, and body. And, and the book of Hebrews declares that. Did you know that, in, that if you think about it, Jeremiah said he tried to quit so many times. He said, but it's like fire shut up in my bones. How can I quit? And when Elisha was buried, that... that they threw a dead man in his tomb and it landed on his bones and touched his bones and the man woke up again. There's something about the word. There's something about the call of God. There's something about that that goes down into the very fiber of someone's bones. That I believe that's part of what's going to call the dust and, the, and all that have been buried in the sea, land, or wherever to come back bone to bone and, and resurrect. Because it never leaves. It's always there. Hallelujah. I want you to look at Revelation chapter 4 today. Uh, just a, For just a little while, I want to look at this scripture. Revelation 4. Uh, After this I looked, John said, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, come up hither, listen to this next line, and I will show thee the things which must be hereafter. I will show you the things that much must be hereafter in the future. The future, the prophetic deals with the future. It, it deals with a lot of things, and there's a lot of things that go with the office of a prophet and in the prophetic utterance of believers everywhere. But one thing, one underlying thing that cannot be gotten away from is that prophetic and prophecy deals with the future, with the hereafter. Now, the Scripture says that the kingdom of God is within you. Did you know that? It says that the kingdom of God is within you. Now, let me find a scripture here that the kingdom of God, wow, now, yes. Listen to this in Luke 17 and verse 21. Neither shall they say, lo here, lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So within you, God has placed the kingdom. So inside you is your future. Inside you is your hereafter. 
Inside you is your destiny. God placed it there. Now, notice this. Jesus said one time in, in the scripture, people quote it this way, that he said, I, I came to seek and save uh, those which were lost, which he did that. But he actually said, I came to seek that and save that, that which was lost. There is the, everything when man fell, his destiny was lost to him. His future was lost. That's why you call it lost. People just stumble around. They don't know where they're going. And, be, and it takes Jesus coming into someone's life to restore that. That what? That destiny. That call that was inside them. See, when a child is conceived, there's a spark of electricity that takes place when the seed and the egg collide. And, and science has proven that it lights up. It just sparks like that. I've seen a, like video of it or, or however they did that. And it showed that burst of light, that energy. That's resurrection power. That's God visiting someone's baby shower. And he brings these gifts. He brings this destiny. He brings this call. And when that child is born and, and, and splits the womb and comes into the open of this, this world and this atmosphere, that child will cry. That child, I believe, is crying for its destiny. It's crying for that which God deposited to come to it in life. And when a child is a small, just a, a child innocent in their heart toward God, those gifts will flash out of them. And they act strange to people. And they'll say, do you know my child saw this? My child heard that. I think they saw an angel. And adults have groped around in darkness so long, but the child hasn't. And it hadn't yet taken hold of them. But then as that child begins to gravitate toward the dark places, the gifts and the light that shine within them begins to dim and they can't find it anymore. And we call that being, it's lost now. They're lost. But Jesus is the light of the world. St. John 1 declares that that light came into the darkness and shined into it and the darkness couldn't hold it down and seize on it. So when the, if you want those gifts to come back alive and you to be able to see your hereafter, then you have to invite Jesus into your heart. You invite Jesus, the risen son of the living God, to come into your heart and be your Lord and personal savior. And if you do that, then the light comes into the darkness and the darkness can't hold it down and seize on it. And suddenly your hereafter comes alive in you again. And you get this hunger to search out the light, to go toward the master himself, and he can reveal your destiny to you. So you ought to do that right now. Say, Lord Jesus. You say, how do I do that? Well, the apostle Paul said in Romans 10, 9 and 10, he talks about it. says, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you'll be saved. So what you want to do is say, I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And he said, then if you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart God raised him from, your, from the dead and confess with your mouth that he's your Lord, you'll be saved. So you say, I believe in my heart, Jesus, God raised you from the dead and I confess with my mouth that right now you are my Lord. Live in my heart. Cleanse me of sin. And I'm telling you something, now your destiny is available to you again. It's even visible to you. And you begin to see it as you spend time in his word. Hallelujah. Now, Revelation 4, the, he says, Come up hither, and I will show thee the things which must be hereafter. So there is a hereafter that he's wanting to show us. Now, the future living within you must become visible inside you. Once that future becomes visible within you, you can, you can draw the faith of that tomorrow. You can draw the faith of that tomorrow because a visible future within you, within your spirit, is God preaching to you from your tomorrow. 
Once you see that the, the visible hereafter that God has planned for you inside your spirit, that is, you can draw the faith from that tomorrow. No matter what you see today, because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and that's God preaching to you from your tomorrow. So you can draw the faith of that future. And you can live today by the faith of the Son of God. That's what the Scripture says. Now, over in Matthew, let's go over there to Matthew chapter 4. I want to see this. And uh, uh, verse 4, let's look at that. And he answered, this is on the Mount of Temptation, and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of God's mouth. That was Jesus who said that. Now, that is from your tomorrow. He's breathing your direction. He's talking to you. And you're one word behind God all the time. But you know what else that means? That means if you live by every word that comes out of his mouth, you're not only just one word behind him all the time, but you can hear every word he says. Hallelujah. Now, John uh, 8, 12, let's go over there. We want to look at a few scripture like this so that you can see it and, and it can get in your eyes and in your ears. Um, John 8, let's see if that's where I want to be. John 8 and um, verse 12 then Jesus spake, Je then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Isn't that amazing? So he is light, and that light is our life. So he is our life. He is our breath. St. John chapter 20. Let's look at that. St. John 20, we're just, I want to be sure and, and see some of this together. Uh, verse 19, we'll start. John 20 and verse 19. And that same day in the evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them, stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Well, they would need peace when he walked through the wall, wouldn't they? And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you. As my father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive you, the Holy Ghost. So he's our light. He's our breath. He's our breath. Think about this. He, uh, John chapter 6, let's look at that. Go back to John 6, and let's see this. He's our life. He's our breath. And we'll look at, uh, let's see, verse 35. It says, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So he's our light, he's our breath, he's our bread. He's our food. He's everything to us. You must hold on by faith to the reality of God he's given you. There are two realities within you. And I should say two realities before you. There are two realities before you. If you take hold of the wrong reality, it's just like this. A prophet can get to a place to where things become so overwhelming in their spirit. Uh, I'm talking about the office of a prophet now. A prophet can get to a place because their passion is high. 
and, and they, they're passionate about the Word, passionate about the Son of God, passionate about the Holy Ghost, passionate about the people, to see the people receive and walk into destiny. That if they see things, they can pick up on sadness around them, or they can pick up on on, and some of the intercessors, you know what I'm talking about. You can pick up on sadness. You can pick up on, on uh, gladness and happiness. A prophet can be sitting on the front row and everybody in the room crying and the prophet's laughing. And they say, what are you laughing for, prophet? And they say, well, I can see what's coming. And then they can be in a room and everybody is laughing and the prophet's weeping. And crying, and they say, what are you crying for, prophet? And he said, well, because I see what's coming. But there's always these two realities before you. There's a sadness that comes out of the world, and the world stealing the faith of the people, and darkness prevailing in places. Then there's always a gladness God sets before you. And so you can choose the blessing or the curse, and he, he sets them before you. But a prophet sometimes can get so overwhelmed that they, they become what the world calls melancholy. They become into a place where they can start talking out of and right in deep passion and deep emotion. But if you don't watch it, you'll begin to call for that world to come. That world, when it's sensed and and. And the Lord has shown you a great light and yet fear or, or depression or, or even becoming melancholy and, and what the world would call romantic in, in depression. When that begins to come, that must be taken immediately and put into the world of intercession so that intercessions and intercessors can pray the death out of it. And a prophet has to keep looking toward the light and calling in that. Hallelujah. Now, if we go over to, let's see, Revelation. I don't know how much of this the Lord's going to even let me talk about, but, but I will try. Revelation chapter 5, no, chapter 4. Look at chapter 4, and we'll look at verses 6 and 7. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne there were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion. The second beast was like an, a calf. And the third beast had a face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. A lion, an eagle, an ox, and a man. If you look through the eyes of the lion, and that's all you look through, then all you see is war. That's what you'll see because the lion comes to war. The lion comes to disrupt and change everything. So you have to look through the eyes of a lion. But if that's all you look through, you'll see war. If you only look through the eyes of the ox, you will only see sacrifice and work. If you only look through the eyes of a man, then you'll only see limita limitations and corruption. But if you look through the eyes of an eagle, then you will see beyond the war to the, the place beyond the battlefield, a place of safety. And you can call from the sky, come this way. The lion, the fight. The eagle, the sea that sees. The ox that sacrifices. And the man in the faces of God, all, these have, all of them have this expression, and the man would be Christ Jesus, that all these manifested in him. So in the prophetic, we have to, we have to see all these things. We have to look at all these things. And God wants you to be raised up to see your destiny. He wants you to see your destiny. He wants you to come up to a place today. The sounds that were made on the stage was a place of the future. 
It was a place where you could hear the notes. They got higher and higher and higher and almost screamed out. And it was like, listen, uh, I can see beyond. This will not always stay the same. And so the eagle sees. The lion fights. The ox works and is sacrificed and, and, is, and sacrifices. And the man, Christ Jesus, brings it all together in one name. Do you understand? So you can't look at it in the natural. These are not natural beings. These are angelic creatures full of eyes, and each one has something to see. And I'm talking about something that's beyond me right now. I'm talking about something that's still way out there right now. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus is the culmination of all these. And he took the corruption of a man. He took the corruption of a man. So now you don't have to look through the eyes of a natural man. You can look through the eyes of the resurrected man who was perfect in every way. Hallelujah. So I hope that made sense to you. The lion. You look through his eyes, you can see how to war. You look through the eagle's eyes and you see beyond the battlefield to the place of safety. You look through the eyes of the ox and you're ready to sacrifice and work. If you look through the eyes of the man, Christ Jesus, then you look to the perfect place where you can actually live in his perfection because if we only look at a natural man, we always see his corruption. But he has perfection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I know people will write in and say, yeah, Brother Robin, that's just kind of crazy. And, and you, you said some things that, no, I'm saying things in the spirit that's beyond us. It's beyond me anyway. I'm, I'm looking out there, and I'm looking over the horizon at something but we'll find it. Hallelujah. And then the perfect order of this is the lion that fights, the eagle that sees, the ox that sacrifices and has great strength, and the man, Christ Jesus, who dealt with all the corruption. Now we look through these and we can operate in these anointings right here, all because of him. Amen. 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 Praise God. You know, there's a time and a season for every purpose under the heavens, Ecclesiastes declares. A time and a season for every purpose, uh, uh, for, uh, for everything that happens under heaven. But after a while, once a time ends, you've got to let go of that time and don't carry that time over into the next time or it won't look right to you. It's distorted. You can't just stay in one time and not move to the next time or it gets a distorted view of something. Hallelujah. And you'll confuse the time. You know, what if, what if Joshua had stood at the Red Sea and said, Moses, no, hey, 